we are in front of the booth from the Czech Republic right now, and next to me is the president of the Czech Game Developers Association. Um, so maybe you can introduce yourself and tell a little bit why you're on the Gamescom today and what do you do in the Czech Republic? Uh, so our association is basically the industry organization representing and protecting the industry and all its members, which are game development companies. Uh, at Gamescom, we prepared the Czech National Pavilion or booth uh, for studios. We brought with us seven uh, different companies. Uh, some of them are just game dev companies presenting the game. We have one uh, game development school. We also have some outsourcing studios. And, and for us, it's just the opportunity to present the Czech industry on the international scene. Yes, so how is the gaming market in the Czech Republic? Is it a big market and how do you see the future? Uh, I wouldn't say it's, it's big, uh, at least for now, mm -hmm. but it's definitely growing and that's quite important. It's growing very fast, like there is more than 25% uh, increase each year on average in last five years. So it's a, it's a massive grow. The global games market is growing, but the Czech games industry is growing like two or three times uh, faster than the global gaming market. So that's very positive. We see plenty of new studios uh, emerging every year, and, and we also have quite successful uh, gaming studios. So some of the games are quite well known worldwide, we are super proud and happy that one of them is, for example, Beat Saber, which is the virtual reality uh, market leader. Uh, so that's a, that's a small Prague-based studio and um, that's one of the Czech examples of worldwide success. Yes, so is there any support from the government, like financial support or is there something you don't have? So, yeah, I, under, I understand. Um, there are some options, uh, but uh, still, we would say it's uh, quite a little of the support, and not not that not that much. Uh, basically, we look at uh, like uh, direct financial support. Uh, it's uh, not present there as of now, even though some of the processes already started, and and we expect uh, that in few years. Uh, there is potential that there will be a lot, op lot more option than it's now. Currently the studios can use the European fund, the Creative Europe, uh, but that's not uh, something Czech specific, it's for the whole European Union. But some of the Czech studios are applying there, some of them are even successful, so that's an option. Then there is uh, some support uh, for activities like this national pavilion or for some international missions and various other, I would say, minor things. But that there would be some uh, incentives, some subsidies, some tax direction that's, um, that's uh, not happening now uh, in, in case of Czech Republic. And, and we've seen some, some examples abroad. So I think uh, these are like good, good examples to follow. So we hope that it will change. I think the, the position of the Czech games industry in the, in the society is getting much better. Uh, that the government and even like just the general public uh, is aware of the industry. It's massive growth mainly, and the, and the worldwide success. So nowadays, like we manage that, the the strategies of various ministries, including the games industry. But we need like the the real outcome that there will be some uh, incentives or or some uh, tax reductions or these sort of things. So we can help the the young studios so we see more startups and stuff like that yes yeah, so i actually saw that you are supported by the government uh, or ministry of foreign affairs and the consulate general of the czech republic and how do you think how important is germany for future corporations and is there any friendship going on so for us um, if I look at the Gamescom, that's obviously very important to be present here, to connect the industry with the world, because for Gamescom, I would say, especially for the business section, the whole gaming industry around the world is coming to one place, and that's perfect. In terms of Germany itself, for us it's 
mainly uh, some good example to follow. There are some fields uh, where, where we can look at it and, and, and uh, follow the same example, basically. Uh, I just talked with some, some people from German Association. Obviously, we are close in touch with GameDE. We are also part of the EGDF and currently, or for last six years, uh, the president of European Game Developers Federation, the EGDF, is, uh, is German, Henrik Lesser, and, and they just giving us lots of uh, knowledge. So, uh, obviously, German economics and, uh, and, and uh, the GDP and everything is much bigger than Czech Republic. And I think it, even in many other cases, it's, uh, it's like further ahead. So for us, it's an uh, it's example to follow. That's one thing. For international cooperation, obviously, there are some things that we're already doing. Some, some like sharing the knowledge, inviting uh, guests from Germany or sending our experts uh, to events uh, in Germany. That's already happening, so the international cooperation, but uh, maybe for the future some, some projects. We've, we've actually managed and started and even finished a couple of educational projects. Uh, unfortunately, I don't think there was uh, some German partner involved, but that's maybe a thing for the future. Yes, and maybe as a last question. I know that there was an election last year in the Czech Republic and the ministries have changed and has anything changed for the game industry since then? Uh, like, first of all, there, there, there was like a massive, uh, massive change in the, the government and uh, now we have, have like five political parties uh, creating the, the ruling coalition. Uh, and uh, there, are, there are definitely changes, but we must understand that the current situation is super complicated. There are much more important issues like the energetic crisis, the war in Ukraine, still the COVID thing. So for us as the association, we're dealing with, with this on a daily basis. Our Part of our job is do the lobbying, talk with the politicians and the government. And we see that there are more pressing issues than the games industry. But I would say that there, there are changes, but with the, with the state and the government, it's quite slow process, so we are patient and we expect that the things uh, will uh, change or like be more beneficial for games industry in the future years. Because currently, it's it's really like we are super happy about this, like international missions and things like the national booth. Uh, but we still think that there could be uh, done more for the industry, especially in comparison with the movie industry. That's what we're looking at. There is lots of support for movie industry and not that much support for the games industry. Uh, which, uh, which we find as one of the things that, that could be improved um, and some, some other things. So, uh, yeah, I think the process started and, and we will see uh, uh, when it's going to happen. I, I think it's going to happen for sure, but uh, whether it's going to be next year or in the next five years, that's probably the question. Yes, so thank you very much for your time and for the interview and good luck. Yeah, thank you.